Fantastic. Hi. Hello to everybody. Thanks for, uh, we're getting a little bit of a late start here today. Uh, all, all of the fun of learn, learning a new format, but uh, we're really excited you guys could be here with us. We have, uh, I think we've got a good program here and something uh, something nice and informative too. So we have a variety of different uh, different real estate focused uh, graduate school programs here today to, and uh, we're going to ask them to share a little bit more about uh, about their programs and some information about it because these are some good options for people that are interested in furthering their education in uh, in the real estate field. So some of them are directly in real estate. Some of them are uh, a little more adjacent, but it's still very relevant to anybody that's uh, looking to continue their education. So with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to Grant Gilmore, who's a uh, who's over at the College of Charleston. Uh, Grant, can you tell us a little more bit more about you and your program? Sure. Uh, I'm related to a couple graduate programs uh, that the College of Charleston has. Uh, one of them is Community Planning, Policy and Design, which is a relatively new program. And I'll bring the brochure up here real quick. Let me share my screen. Here we are. Um, this is at the core a, an urban design program. Uh, but it's much different than any other urban design program in the country um, because it also involves uh, a deep dive into policy and uh, planning as well. So the intention for a graduate from this program uh, is to participate in city functioning and to make uh, development a little bit easier for the participants, whether you're working for a development firm um a, a contractor or within any of the variety of departments within a city or a town um the, a cpad uh master student will be able to communicate um much more clearly amongst those uh those stakeholders and and get things really done well so that's at the core really is is a developing those communication skills and in every single class that's offered within the cpad program uh, we drive home the ability to communicate ideas clearly. Uh, in addition to this clear communication side of things, uh, we also emphasize a design aesthetic that is global in scope. Um, it's not modernist, uh, and nor is it Greco-Roman traditional like we would have, say, from Notre Dame. Um, instead, uh, using the, the view that is Carlson as a model, um, you're able to uh, incorporate design aesthetics of traditional architecture from any variety of cultures that you learn about uh, around the world. Uh, the Greeks and the Romans were not the only ones to use columns in effective in human ways, human scaled ways. Uh, Mayan, Southeast Asian folks, uh, Japanese, Chinese, um, anybody in the Arab world all be able to build beautiful uh, structures that are um, great in proportion for human beings and uh, blend really well into various environments. We advocate for that sort of um, those sorts of, of angles on the design aesthetics. The curriculum is pretty intense. Um, there are studio courses in, in every semester and you also start out with some basics there, for instance, in drawing Charleston. So applicants or students coming into the program do not know, don't, do not have to have had uh, any design experience previously. So you might have done a real estate degree as an undergrad, but you're really more interested in the bricks and mortar side of things in, in larger scale and using your skills and your ideas to influence uh, on a neighborhood or, or multiple block uh, size area within a city um, and then you'll see the the policy courses are integrated in in there as well transportation issues and sustainability are very important to the program as well and so that final semester when you're doing your graduate thesis studio we expect those graduate theses to incorporate all of the dimensions that you previously looked at and if i find in a master's thesis that sustainability is not emphasized enough i'd send our students back to the drawing board to make sure that they're they're doing that. Um, many of our graduates are working on real world problems and we emphasize that as well, uh, whether it's from their hometown, a town that they've traveled to previously, 
or perhaps in Charleston. Some examples, um, one of our graduate students uh, did a design project, a redevelopment project in, in West Ashley, and uh, which is west of the Ashley River here in Charleston. And the, and the city is actually using uh, that master's thesis as a model uh, to to redevelop a particular uh, um, commercial block into affordable housing and a new commercial side of things there in West Ashley. Another of our students is uh, um, doing a conjectural plan of pedestrianizing uh, a good portion of King Street, for example. Uh, there's also that side of things. That was originally proposed actually in the 1950s, we've discovered, and then uh, set on the shelf and then it's, it's back off the shelf now. And the city uh, is really interested in that side of things. Um, we emphasize that we're progressive um, and uh, we want our students to create a beautiful environments uh, for humans to to occupy uh, in work, uh, home and in, in play. Um, and really we're placemakers. We want our students to make uh, places that are uh, good for people to 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 occupy and to be in. And of course, Charleston, the city of Charleston is a perfect classroom for all of this. It's uh, our city is um, um, heavily uh, influences uh, advances in urban design and architecture throughout the world. Um, we we've, we've talked to folks doing developments in Australia, for instance, and they were they were wanting to understand the Charleston single house. And I believe outside of Adelaide now, there's a a, 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 a development happening that, that incorporates Charleston single homes. And who would have thought that they would be built in, uh, in Australia? So, in, so Richard, in, I have a couple of questions yeah, for you. Sure. If a student gets accepted or lands a great job or something like that, do they have the ability to defer their admission to the program? They do. Yes, they can. They can defer their program uh, entry and we do have students on occasion do that. That said, we also have designed the program uh, to enable students to perhaps work full time while they are in the program. And in fact, many of most of our second years have full time jobs in design firms or with the city of Charleston right now while they're they're finishing off their degrees. So that is definitely a possibility. Is there an ideal candidate for your graduate program? What sort of what sort of skill sets do you think they should have? Um, a willingness to try to change the built environment is pretty much it. Um, and understanding mm -hmm. that uh, the built environment in many places around the world is dysfunctional and a desire, a keen desire to to make it more functional for people. Um, we don't we we have specifically designed the program again to allow uh, any number of backgrounds uh, to do well. In fact, we encourage and desire a diverse, in every definition of the word, uh, cohort. Um, we've had school teachers, people from the military, uh, people with an architecture or design undergraduate program uh, experience, um, all, all working together and playing off of each other's backgrounds to make it a much more rich, a much richer experience. And in fact, a more realistic experience because those are the sorts of folks that are occupying these urban spaces and understanding the perspectives from the varied backgrounds is very important for our program. Fantastic. What kind of jobs do your graduates find? Uh, one of them is in their own design firm. Uh, mm. And from the first year, we've been around for three years now, we've got uh, our second group of students graduating this this May in the coming week. Uh, one of them is going to be a planner in Coronado, uh, California, which is just south of San Diego. You might know them as the that that is the training base for the Navy SEALs and based in California, the Pacific Fleet. Um, another one is returning to her hometown in New Jersey and working for a firm there. And uh, Samantha's career has been altered due to health reasons. And mm. Ali is also uh, very close to landing a job with a with a firm uh, as well. So I believe all Brand, of that is fantastic. Is all of it's, all uh, it sounds right. like they're really doing well. Yeah. Then I'm, um, I'm we. Wow. 
Yeah. We probably need to uh, need to let Hugh jump on while uh, while his connection lasts. Hugh, are you with us? Can you hear me? I uh, I certainly am, and I'm sorry that I can't be uh, on uh, video. Uh, this is not a a connection uh, software that I'm used to using, so I must have screwed up somehow. It uh, it does remind me of something my wife has frequently said, uh, which is that my epitaph is going to be he was a, a low tech guy in a high tech world, <laughs> and uh, you know, and that's accurate enough. Uh, I always wonder why she's thinking about my epitaph, but we'll leave, maybe leave that for another discussion. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm very very happy, and thank you for the invitation to uh, introduce uh, Fordham's uh, Real Estate Institute in our graduate uh, program. It's a relatively new program. Uh, Bob Morgenstern and I uh, and uh, a few others uh, moved over as a team in late 2016 from New York University to establish uh, this. This is uh, actually my second opportunity to be present at the creation of a, of a master's degree program since I did that uh, at NYU in 1988 as well. Um, uh, you know, we are uh, a part of the School of Continuing and Professional Studies at, uh, at Fordham, uh, and uh, we have a program that uh, took in its first class in 2017 and now has about 120 active master's degree students. We've had uh, 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 a group of, uh, of graduates uh, who are now active in the industry, both on the construction and on the um, investment uh, side of things. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm pleased, I'm very pleased with our, our progress in a short amount of time. When we were writing the curriculum for uh, for uh, the program, and maybe we'll go to a, a second slide here uh, if we if we can. Um, the uh, the thought was that uh, there were really four questions that needed to be answered, um, you know, for uh, uh, for a program and for students going through. One is what do graduates need to know, and obviously there's uh, uh, the content question for everything. Then there's the, the question, what do uh, graduates need to know how to do? And there's a lot in the uh, curriculum uh, that focuses on the technical skills that, uh, that you need to do uh, valuation and investment, negotiations and finance and uh, risk and portfolio management, uh, credit and analysis. And those are all technical skills that, that are important. So, what do you need to know? What do you need to know how to do? Uh, but I've been a, a believer that um, over the course of my career that I, I've seen, this is, will be the fourth major real estate recession uh, that we've been through. And in, in not a single instance was it ever uh, uh, an event that occurred because people didn't have technical skills. You know, this is a, this is different, but the RTC and uh, failure of the SNL crisis, the global financial crisis of, of 2008 and 9 didn't happen because people didn't have technical skills. They occurred because people didn't have the ability to make good prudential judgments about, uh, about the impacts of their business decisions, and those cascaded uh, uh, through the uh, through the industry, so in order for our graduates to be leaders, we want them not only to have the contents of knowledge and a toolkit of skills, but we want to help them to exercise mature judgment in life and in business. And our management courses are designed in that respect, and also something that's relatively unusual in the real estate higher education field. You'll see if you've got the graduation requirements uh, uh, slide up uh, that uh, sequence number one is ethical issues in real in real estate, and this ability to make good prudential and ethical judgments is 
part and parcel of being a leader in, in our business. And we try to uh, make this very practical and have lots of uh, people who have been in the position of running companies, running uh, departments, uh, uh, leading teams talk about this dimension of making uh, uh, decisions uh, that are uh, uh, important ethically, not only for individuals, but also for, uh, uh, for the firm and the society as a whole. And that's the fourth thing. You know, if you're going to be a leader, how can we prepare graduates to function as responsible leaders in the larger society? Because real estate is a, a field that touches everybody. Uh, uh, as, uh, as we heard, you know, the built environment is something that's uh, part and parcel of our experience and helps shape the cities that, uh, that we live in. Um, you know, the, uh, the next slide uh, talks about another way that we accomplish that. Um, from the onset of the program, uh, I've uh, tried to uh, place every single student who comes through the master's program with a mentor from the industry. Uh, we've had uh, you know, a lot of demand from, uh, from the student body for, uh, uh, for that, uh, but sometimes not as much follow through as I would like. So we've changed that now uh, to be an opt-in program. Please assign me a, uh, an industry mentor, and if so, I will look out into uh, our field, both Fordham graduates and, and, and otherwise people in the uh, banking industry, people in the life insurance investment industry, people from the REIT field, designers, real estate lawyers, public, uh, 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 public agency folks from uh, places like the Metropolitan uh, Transportation Authority, and the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, which is, of course, one of the owners of the World Trade Center in Lower Manhattan. Um, uh, appraisers, brokers, you name it. Uh, uh, the people in our industry are very, mm -hmm. very willing to give their time to, uh, to students and help people uh, uh, advance. And that's because almost all of us realize that we didn't get to the positions that we uh, eventually enjoyed without having guiding hands along the way. Uh, one of our uh, greatest advocates uh, uh, in the uh, real estate industry is a, uh, a dual degree alum of uh, Fordham, Marianne Gilmartin, who was the CEO of Forest City Ratner, um, uh, you know, a very large scale mixed use uh, developer not only in the New York area, but throughout the Northeast and, and Midwest. And uh, uh, Marianne uh, is uh, uh, dynamic in trying to use her influence to help uh, uh, you know, young people get connected with high-level mentors in, uh, in the field and uses her own influence to, uh, to get that, that done. So we have a lot of help in this. Uh, uh, one, Hugh, that is fantastic. Uh, Are students you know, able to defer their uh, graduate their admissions? Uh, should something come have, up? Yeah, we have a we have a rolling admissions. Um, so it, it's not as though there is one admission uh, date. Um, uh, and yes, if for some reason a student uh, uh, and this ha this has happened obviously with international students, but also. Uh, people have things going on in their lives, and they need to uh, defer. That's that's fine. We'll we'll work with things. Fordham's uh, a that's Jesuit fantastic. school. Yeah, Fordham is a Jesuit school, and the Jesuits have a principle in education, and it's called mm -hmm. cura cura personalis, which is Latin for care of the individual. So rather than uh, you know. Uh, just treat everybody, you know, uh, as uh, as a as a replaceable part. Students get a lot of individual attention, and we try and work very heavily uh, with them. Fantastic, uh, Hugh. Thank you so much for uh, running us through your program. At this point, I want to introduce uh, Ron Magnuson. Ron, are you with us?
I see the runs here. It just uh, takes one second to switch from one thing to another. Okay, can you hear me? Sure can. Okay, I don't know if my slides are up. Uh, hopefully they are. Uh, thank you so much for, for, for having me. Uh, we're thrilled to be here representing the MBA program. I uh, just want to give you a brief overview of our MBA program. Uh, first, I am uh, Ron Magnuson. I'm the director of the MBA program. Spent most of my career in the energy industry. Um, was uh, an engineer by education, later got my MBA. Uh, headed human resources and ultimately became a VP before I left the higher education. I spent 11 years at Pitt where I taught the MBA capstone course and I've been here at the College of Charleston for, for two years. Our program uh, is a one-year full-time program. It runs from August to June, basically a little over 10 months. We're accredited, uh, which is uh, unique. Most MBA programs in the world are, are not, and so we are uh, uh, accredited. It's 36 credits. Uh, we, we do have three focus area courses to allow people to focus in a particular area. But one of the things that's unique about our program is that we have people that come from every walk of life. We've got art majors, business major undergraduates, music majors, uh, history majors. And, and so that's one of the unique things about our cohort is that we bring people in from all areas. We acclimate people with a online course in the summer so that we're all ready to go uh, in August. One of our uh, featured programs is a mentor program where we will assign all of our students an executive mentor from the Charleston area. Uh, we will find somebody that matches the industry you're interested in. Uh, we have a gap year student ready to go to medical school coming in and we're going to match him with an orthopedic surgeon. So we, we go out and find the right mix for somebody. Uh, we do an international trip. Uh, we have executive coaching. Uh, MBA Fridays is where we bring ex executive speakers in. And we, we sort of learn in learning teams so that uh, not only the assignments done through learning teams, but uh, the teams help each other learn. And uh, it's really a unique way of learning. I, we're very proud uh, of our program. We're relatively new, but uh, we are known for our job placement. We were recently ranked number one in the nation uh, by US News uh, World and Report. Uh, we're very proud that we're one of the most affordable full-time programs in the nation. Uh, uh, ranked by U.S. News and World Report. Uh, we're proud of our diversity with the number of females we have in the program. And, and again, being a one-year program uh, is very attractive in today's date. So we're we're proud to be a top 10 public one-year program in the nation. So very, very proud of our program. Uh, it's a very diverse opportunity. We, we have people who have come from the real estate area and have uh, worked in the real estate upon graduation. Uh, so we, we, we believe everything's a business, and so an MBA program can really facilitate someone that wants to go into virtually any field. So that's just a, a, a brief synopsis of, of, of our program. Uh, happy to entertain any questions. Well, Ron, um, I am curious. I'm, I'm sort of asking the same questions of everybody just because it's useful information for students that are trying to figure out what level of flexibility they have. Mm -hmm. um, do they have the ability to defer uh, admissions? Uh, absolutely. Um, we've had five people coming in this cohort who have deferred from the previous year. So absolutely, the ability to defer. Fantastic. It's, uh, do you find that there is, it sounds like that there's a large number of people from different backgrounds. Is there an ideal candidate? You know, we have up? people who have uh, drive, focus. Uh, we, so we, we require an interview. We look for people who have intellectual curiosity, people that not just want to get a, an MBA degree, but want to take the skills that we teach them and be able to apply them throughout their career. We, we, we pride ourselves on having strong academics, but, but I think what we're known for is the soft skills that we learn in our professional development programs uh, outside the classroom. Fantastic. Is there, um, can you talk at all about your alumni networks? Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, we're, we're very proud of our alumni network. Uh, in, in matter of fact, uh, we have an alumni board uh, who helps us interface with our alumni. They're scattered all over uh, the country. 
uh, they have uh, raised enough money to have an alumni scholarship this year. So we're, we're very proud for the first year ever. The alumni are going to give a um, an incoming candidate a scholarship. It's very active. We've got alumni that are helping students uh, obtain their online certifications. We've got alumni that are helping students find jobs, but uh, very, very, very active and very happy with a, an alumni that wants to give back. Are there any opportunities? This, you know, we are real estate focused over at the uh, yeah. over there, Carter Real Estate Center. Are there opportunities to intern in commercial real estate while Absolutely. you're doing the MBA program? As a matter of fact, we've got two people interning right now. Uh, I think I think Elaine is within earshot, but uh, one of uh, our students works for Elaine right now as a graduate assistant and works with a local commercial real estate person. Uh, and I, I'm proud to say he's got a position. Uh, in, in the housing and real estate area after graduation. Uh, so yeah, we've we've had people who have uh, specialized in the area. I can think of five graduates in the last two or three years that have uh, gone in the in, in the uh, real estate industry upon graduation. Fantastic. Ron, thank you so much. Uh, at this point, we want to turn it over to the next person in the process, uh, which would be Amy Matthews Herrick. Amy, did I get your name correct? You did. Hello, everyone. So I'm going to share my screen as well. Hold on one second. Let's see if this works. One sec. There we go. So uh, mine's a little longer, but I'll run through this pretty quickly if y'all can still hear me. Uh, I work more on the student services side with the real estate development program. Um, my background is in student affairs uh, with Clemson and history. Um, but these are some of our students really quickly. Uh, we are located in downtown Greenville. We are a true interdisciplinary degree program in real estate development. We have two sequences. One's an 18 month sequence for those the early career students that don't have a ton of experience and then there is a 12 month experience development professional sequence that one's designed for folks who have more than three years of direct development experience that can be documented with a portfolio. Um, I'm not going to run through all the curriculum information that is online pretty accessible and I can post my information for y'all after if you have any other questions. Uh, it is pretty small. We have a maximum of 30 students per class. Um, we are founded out of the Urban Land Institute principles of being responsible developers. So we are seeking well-rounded students uh, who have an interest and passion in real estate development. I think the trend that you're hearing probably through this is that these programs all want someone who is well-rounded, kind of an interdisciplinary nature of what they're doing, can, can work well with people and uh, understand the full 360 degrees of the real estate profession uh, and for folks who want to impact the built environment positively. Uh, Clemson's MRE program started in 2004. It's the 16th year of our program and we're about 250 alumni at this point. So um, we're growing in size. Uh, a lot of highlights for our program. We do send all of our students to the fall ULI meeting. We have a mini semester coastal tour. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has switched that up to the fall for this year, but we're working through it. A lot of project based classes, immersion learning. We do use Greenville sort of as a living, living lab. Uh, like the folks there do in Charleston. We do have an active advancement board and do a lot of regional trips as well. Um, our practicum uh, course is our version of a thesis. Uh, so it's a full development proposal that's pretty comprehensive, a market analysis, site analysis, and financial analysis of a live site. Most of those sites are pretty prominent. Uh, probably the biggest one, if anyone's familiar with Columbia, South Carolina, is Bull Street. Our students did work on that practicum presentation back in 2011. Um, so we have a lot of students who asked about internships. That is a requirement for our program for the 18 month sequence. Um, you know, students find that this is a way to make great contributions uh, to the profession and learn a lot. Obviously, as Hugh mentioned, gaining mentors um, through internships. So we assist with that as much as possible. I will say COVID-19 has changed that up just a bit, but we are having students do a lot of remote work and we're working with them and trying to be flexible with what the summer is going to look like in this environment. Um, permanent employment, which I, is on everyone's radar. Um, you know, we have students that go everywhere. So project development, uh, portfolio analysis, financial analysis, asset management. You can see a list there quickly of our December 2019 graduates. So some of those firms might be familiar to you um, and we assist with that as much as possible. Again, working with fit for our students. 
And then all of our students are members of regional and national organizations and our students this spring were finalists for the, MR, um, the MIT case competition. Unfortunately, they were not able to go up to New York for those finals because of COVID-19, um, but just a list of everything that we are participating in for our students. And then quickly, uh, students are eligible to borrow with financial aid for our program, and uh, I can send more information about that, uh, but Clemson's financial aid is your best resource. We do have a limited amount of fellowships for our program that come from our advancement board. Uh, they're very small, unfortunately. Um, they don't cover to full tuition or living expenses, but they are there, um, and all students who apply uh, to the program in an application season are candidates for the ABRED fellowships. The smaller other named awards may have other categories to go with those. Um, and then we have an open deadline of May 30th uh, for this summer's cohort, so it's not too late to apply. Um, you can see the requirements there, GRE or GMAT, which we can talk about if the at-home testing proves problematic for those that are looking, unofficial transcripts three letters of recommendation, a resume, and a personal statement. So application is uh, pretty quick there. And um, all of our summer classes are online as part of our general curriculum. Clemson is all online for the summer. Um, and then students can request a change of term or admissions deferral Unknown if they are able to start this joining. summer. And there there's some of our program contact information. I know it was pretty quick uh, synopsis there, but um, in line with a lot of these other programs, you know, we're here to help students who are looking for an advanced degree. And, you know, I think if this is something that you're interested in, um, just let us know. Fantastic, Amy. Thank you so much for uh, running us through it. Um, there, as far as as far as um, if you were to wanted to be in this program, what sort of what sort of skill set should you have? I think for this program, I think you need to have a desire, obviously, to help the built environment, healthy communities. I think you need to have a desire to work with people who are not like you, uh, have an open mind for other concepts, um, and then just you know a general kind of relaxed nature about yourself and be flexible that's what the real estate industry is all about and obviously as you can see you know this coronavirus has changed everything and the, it doesn't always work like it's planned so being flexible in your careers i think is super important whether you go to grad school or in any other job that you pursue fantastic thank you so much nick do we have you on the line right now I think so. I'm hoping that we we do. Fantastic. Uh, right now, this is that we have uh, Nicholas Sanders Esquire from uh, the Charleston School of Law. Well, thank you so much for having me here, and I'm sorry that I'm calling in. Um, I think one of the previous presenters mentioned that he's low tech in a high tech world, and uh, I take great pride in that. As a matter of fact, so um, unfortunately, though, it appears to have got gotten the best of me tonight, but I, I'm so glad to be here and I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, and so, as was mentioned, um, I am the uh, Associate uh, Dean of Students at the Charleston School of Law and the Assistant um, Dean of Career Services. And so I just want to talk really briefly um, a little bit about our program overall and then also just as it pertains to real estate, obviously. Um, I know that that's what you all are really interested in. Um, and so just a little bit of kind of the 20,000 foot view briefly. Um, obviously, a Juris Doctor degree is a terminal degree. Um, it's a three year process. Um, uh, we require about 90 hours in order to graduate from the program. Um, the Charleston School of Law is a private independent law school. We're located in downtown Charleston and we're accredi accredited um, by the uh, ABA, the American Bar Association. Uh, we were founded in 2003 and graduated our first class in 2007. Um, we have approximately right at around 600 students total who are enrolled in the school currently. And we have um, just over um, 2,000 alumni practicing in 45 states around the country and a number of uh, countries around the world. Um, 
So that's kind of the 30,000, 20,000 foot view uh, of the program. Um, we have two um, cohorts that enter each year. So one of those cohorts starts in the fall. And so we'll have a fall admission uh, of first year students that has we'll have somewhere in between generally 175 and 200 students and those students will finish in a three-year um, uh, three-year term we also have an enrollment that begins in january so we'll enroll a class in august and then we'll also enroll another class in january of 2021 that january cohort will graduate elaine to an Warzal is now joining hey elaine so uh, the, the other piece um, with the January class is that they graduate in two and a half years. And so they would actually graduate at the same time as their um, classmates who started in August. And so for anybody who, you know, is thinking, okay, today is April 23rd, you know, the, the decision about going to law school would be a pretty big one. Um, you know, I don't know how comfortable I would be to walk into that in three and a half months, even though it is still possible to do so. Um, keep in mind that a January admission um, is is on the book is sort of on the table, and so if that gives you a little bit of more breathing room um, and some more time to think through the decision, you can do that. And there's really no prejudice to you in terms of when you would graduate. You would graduate at the same time as if you were a full-time student starting in August. So how does our program? How does a Juris Doctor program relate to real estate? Um, and the answer to that question is it relates to real estate um, in, in a very, very large uh, and a very significant manner. Um, you know, there are so many aspects of uh, real estate and dealing with real property that require a knowledge and an understanding of what the law is and how to utilize that law to accomplish um, what it is that your project requires you to accomplish. Um, so, you know, just for us, even on the front end, the, you know, your first year of law school, you're going to spend 20% of your entire first year curriculum focused on property. And that's primarily a focus on real property. And, you know, that's a really sort of broad uh, consideration where we're asking ourselves questions like, how do we define property? You know, what is property actually made up of? Is it just the dirt that we're standing on? Or is it something more than that? We ask ourselves the question, how is it controlled? How do we control property, real property and otherwise? And then we get into a large discussion about how that property and the rights in that property can be transferred. And can we split up certain rights from other rights and transfer certain rights and hold on to other rights? And so, you know, like I said, that's a that's 20% of your entire first year curriculum on law in law school. So even though you're you're learning how to write as a lawyer and you're learning how to um, draft contracts and you're learning how to um, litigate as a civil litigator, um, you're also learning very fundamental uh, um, concepts with regard to property. Once you have an understanding of those fundamentals, from there you really have an opportunity and an ability to focus more closely on the areas that you might already be interested in or there might be interests that um, have peaked in you as a result of your first year focus on property. And so you know, I just wrote down a handful of what those things could be. Um, obviously, you know, we get in, into a lot of discussion on on financing and the lending process. How do you how do you secure property? How do you lend money for property and development, um, and how that process works? We we talk a great deal, and you, you have an opportunity to study and focus closely on real estate transactions and what all goes into that. Making sure that the title to real property is clear, such that a purchaser um, is getting what they bargained for. Um, you'll spend a lot of time focused on wills, trusts, and estate planning. You know, these are huge issues that people are dealing with on a consistent basis. You're going to understand how to um, maneuver and function in the probate court um, and, you know, how that whole process works. You're going to study landlord tenant issues. You know, so any developer who's getting into any type of residential, and, and then certainly with regard to commercial, you're going to want to make sure that you're drafting contracts that take some of these major issues into consideration. You're going to learn about zoning and development issues. Um, in Charleston, that's a particular concern, obviously, with all of the, um, the focus here on historic preservation. And so you'd have lots of great opportunities to learn about that process. You're also going to learn about environmental issues, right? Um, 
you know, lots of the land in, in the southeast, lots of the land on the coast and in, in Charleston, lots of land in South Carolina has environmental issues. And so you've got to be able to navigate those in order to proceed again with any type of real estate transactions and development. And then finally, um, and again, this is just sort of a snapshot, but you know, you're going to have the ability to, to learn about real property and construction litigation issues. Um, and so, you know, anyone who's done any, uh, any development understands that the litigation process um, on new new construction doesn't start when it's over. Uh, it actually starts during the construction process. So, um, so that's an area we, where you'd have an opportunity to get some exposure. The beautiful thing about a Juris Doctor degree, a JD, becoming a lawyer, obviously it allows you to be involved in all of these different aspects of real estate and real estate development or it allows you to focus on any one of them and become an expert in that one area. And so um, in that way, I feel like it's a really appealing option. But obviously your education is not gonna be just about the classroom, it's gonna be about your experience. And so, you know, we focus in a number of different areas to make sure that our students are getting as much real world, tangible, hands-on experience while they're in law school as possible in the areas that you're, they're really interested in. Um, Two of the really primary areas are our externship, our, <coughs> excuse me, our externship program, where students have the ability to go work with organizations, banks, law firms, judges, and get class credit. That can either be in the summer or it can be during the term. We have summer clerkships and internships where students can go and work and get paid and have the opportunity to focus in the areas of their choice. And we also have opportunities for students to complete their pro bono service um, with organizations um, that really focus on some real property issues. And I'll give you a really very tangible example that's it's really close to home in Charleston, South Carolina and in the, in the low country generally. And that is that we have a, a great relationship and, uh, and send students every semester over to the Center for Heirs Property. And the Center for Heirs Property focuses on providing legal services and support to families who have inherited property through the intestacy process um, over the last however many years, decades, could be um, you know, more than a century in South Carolina. Primarily, heirs' property issues affect the African-American community um, as property that was um, originally granted to freed slaves after the Civil War and, and then passed down through families without the benefit of a will. And so you can imagine that after three or four generations of that, um, you end up with beautiful, 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 amazing pieces of property that are owned in literally um, thousands of shares. So um, the Center for Heirs Property and our students work really closely with the owners of those types of property to, to make that property uh, productive for the families. Um, to, to get it to a place where it can make a meaningful contribution and serve the family and not have the family just serving it. So that's a great opportunity uh, very, and very specific one in Charleston. Um, really and another one. Um, Nick, um, we've only got about uh, less than seven minutes left. So um, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to step in here because I finally got in. Um, uh, we really, um, and I want to make sure I thank everybody. And um, also we have a couple questions coming in. Um, but I do do uh, want to apologize for not being live with you all. Um, as Adam said, Adam is the assistant director of the Carter Real Estate Center, um, and I'm the director of the Carter Real Estate Center. And everybody but Nick, um, I know well and are good friends of mine. So I'm sorry I couldn't join you guys all live. Um, Amy, thank you so much for coming down from Clemson or zooming in from Clemson. Um, Amy and I have worked together for about four years when I was um, director of the program up there, or actually part of the program, not director. Um, and then, of course, Ron and I have been working together for the last three years at the um, college. Uh, Hugh, Hugh and I go back about 20 years. Hugh has been um, actually a mentor of mine for many, many years. He uh, has worked in the industry, has an extremely uh, if you take a look at his LinkedIn page, you'll see he's got an extremely um, long history in commercial real estate. As he mentioned, uh, I think he and I have both gone through five cycles. Uh, we counted them up and, um, you know, real estate is cyclical. And, and one of the reasons we wanted to put this whole panel together was because actually he and I came out 
I think Q and I, maybe he's a little younger, uh, older than I, but I came out during a recession, a big one. Um, 84, there were no jobs, and that's how I ended up in the field I'm in. Um, I ended up uh, basically looking around, no good jobs. So some friends of mine were in the master's program at Wisconsin, and they said, Elaine, why don't you just do the master's program? Um, they got a special for for those of us that had the degree, um, you could get I could get an 18 months uh, instead of two years for those of us that had a undergrad, and uh, so that's what I did. And you know, if I hadn't done that, then I would never have gone into commercial real estate. I probably would be I don't know what I'd be doing. But um, so anyway, so Hugh and I have gone um, through through five cycles, and it is what what happens in real estate. But but the good thing is. They, there is always a cycle. You go up and you go down. And then Grant and I have been working together for, uh, gosh, probably five years now. Grant joined the College of Charleston faculty, and and um, I had uh, actually been working with the Historic Preservation Program when I was up at Clemson. So Grant didn't get a, t a chance to talk about the Masters of Science in Historic Preservation, or I'm sorry, MSHP, yeah. Uh, but there is a second program that we offer um, at the College of Charleston that's a combination uh, degree from Clemson and from the College of Charleston. Grant, do you have a couple minutes to talk about that? I think you're on mute, Grant. Grant, do you want to mention yep. that one really quick? Sure. I, I did want the students to know about that one because it's a, it's a good program. Um, as yeah, well. absolutely. Um, again, Charleston is a classroom, but we send students out uh, all over the place. And uh, for folks that are interested, again, in the built environment, the historical side, especially in our historical cities, the master's uh, degree is great for that. When you think of historic preservation, you probably think of restoring old buildings, but many of the students in the program um, really enjoy doing research on all aspects of our built environment. My one of my uh, master students theses this year, for instance, was trying to understand how retail environments changed over time uh, in the city of Charleston so we could better predict how real estate markets would react to different historical events, for instance. Um, and another student was looking at uh, drainage in the Charleston area. Uh, over the centuries to understand how we can better plan cities in the future. And that was in the historic preservation program. So if you do have a uh, a different angle on the real estate field that uh, might not be best applied in a tr more traditional real estate program, the historic preservation MS might be something for you. Yeah, and, and, and it is. It's a good program um, and it's a two year program. Um, Right. In addition, we wanted to, if anybody's interested, be sure to, to contact either Adam or myself uh, because there, you know, we've given you a smattering of programs, but there are uh, specific to real estate. Um, I've been doing research in this arena for the last probably 12 years, and they, there have steadily been in an increase in programs, um, and they go across the gamut. Some of them are in, in business schools. Um, and again, as Amy mentioned, our, um, the Clemson one is a combination business school and um, on more of the planning and construction and architecture side as well. Um, others are straight business school um, and more like the MBA that Ron discussed, but have more maybe have four or five real estate classes that go with it. Uh, but as Ron pointed out very well, um, a straight MBA provides you with the back you know, basically the basics of business, and then you apply that um, to the real estate enterprises that you might work for. Um, but in addition, there are schools that have, that, have, that have popped up all over the country in um, design, uh, in architecture programs, in planning programs. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities out there. And as I think it was um, Nick mentioned, you know, it might be daunting to say, okay, I'm going to do it in the fall. Um, or even in the spring, but at the same time, you know, maybe it's not so daunting um, as long as you, um, you know, just just apply yourself. And most of the programs uh, will require you to take a GMAT or a GRE, um, and then some of them will require work experience. And for those, um, you know, even I, 
believe most of them will take the work experience. If it has to be internships, they will take that if you can't have a permanent position. Um, what they want to see, um, the directors of those programs typically, is that you've had some exposure uh, to the real estate industry or at least the business world um, before getting into the program. So um, with that, I'm noticing that our time is close to being over, but Adam, I cannot see the questions. Now I can't even see the original one I was watching. So can you ask, I think you told me there's at least one question from the audience still outstanding. There is. Um, what components of your programs do students like the most? Oh, good question. Very good question. Let's do, that'll be our last question. I will do a, one of those rapid fires. So let's start on the other end. Nick, you start. Let's go through. It'll be Nick, Amy, Ron, Hugh, and Grant. And just real quickly, what components make your program the, most, the best in your mind? Nick, your yeah, turn students, to start. Yeah, thank you. Our JD students, um, I think that they enjoy the, um, the hands-on learning experiences the most. I mentioned the Center for Heirs Property. We also worked very closely with the Magistrate Court in Charleston County to establish the Charleston Housing Court where our students actually go in, practice, represent tenants in those types of disputes, far and away the best experience that they're gonna have in law school. Cool. Amy, what do you say? So I think I our students uh, really like the trips the most uh, for those who aren't from the Southeast originally, uh, just to hear from other people on development, like tips and tricks, what's worked, what didn't, it kind of gives them an additional toolkit, if you will, to kind of put in their back pocket for when they actually go out and are developers. And I will say that the practicum, although it is a difficult exercise at the time, ends up being one of their favorites because they can use that in an interview uh, to show what pieces they know about the development process. Perfect. Great. Ron. Uh, I believe the two components I like the best are the mentor program, which is very customized. We have a one-on-one -on -one mentor relationship based on the industry of choice from the students. In international right. Oh, I'm they, sorry, Ron, were you finished? I'm sorry. No, they love the international trip as well with the, uh, the consulting project. Okay. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll pick one in, in class and one out of class uh, thing. In class, I think the thing that is most enthusiastic is we have the Urban Land Institute come into our classroom in the development uh, course and actually do the urban plan exercise uh, with, the, uh, with the students over a six-week period, uh, which gets them in touch with uh, practitioners and has them compete for the best uh, plan uh, and then has that reviewed uh, as though it were going before a, a city council meeting for for approval. It's very hands-on and and puts them in direct touch with some very high-level practitioners. Also, I have to I have to say that our student associations events in uh, conjunction with the industry associations in uh, in New York uh, are uh, are exceptional. It's a social opportunity uh, uh, for uh, the students to get to know one another, but also to network with uh, uh, with the movers and shakers in New York real estate. So uh, uh, the student association, which is is run by the students, uh, uh, is is a huge feature for us. Oh, great! Um, I'm going to take a shameless plug here and say our freshmen. Will present they'll be presenting their urban plans on Monday as their final exam. So if anybody's interested in seeing this thing in action, we have the Urban Land Institute um, City Council members coming in on Monday um, with our freshman class. Last but not least, uh, Dr. Gilmore, what about you? What would you say is the best thing about your program um, from the student perspective? that students aren't designing fantasy that they're actually designing uh new urban environments that are very likely to be built uh if not during beginning the during the time that they are in the program but uh soon thereafter terrific well everybody again i am so sorry i wasn't able to see you all quote unquote live in the teams teams app 
Um, Lindsay, we, tr we truly appreciate all your help um, in terms of pulling this all together and getting all of our speakers online so that they could um, make their presentations. And of course, Adam, our Assistant Director for the Carter Real Estate Center, we are deeply, um, um, deeply gra thankful uh, that you were able to step in and um, take this over um, as you did. I think everybody did a phenomenal job. We really appreciate all your help. And again, I'm sure any of these uh, panelists would be more than welcome to take questions uh, privately from any and all of you. Um, in addition, if you want to contact Adam or I, um, we can uh, give you some additional information on grad programs uh, that have a real estate bent in case you are contemplating the leap. And I know it's, it's a, it's a, it is a big leap and is a little bit scary, but if I can do it, you all can do it. I mean, I was the last person in my family that they thought would get a, a graduate degree and I ended up with a doctorate, um, but I wouldn't have got the doctorate if I hadn't done the master. So go for it if you want. It's fun. Real estate is an unbelievable profession. And right now, um, you know, might be the time to hunker down, spend a year or two um, or three if you decide to do the law degree and, um, you know, focus in. And uh, we know for, for sure uh, by 2022 or 2023, um, the real estate markets will definitely be back. Um, my gut is they'll be back quicker. Wish we could keep Hugh longer because I'm sure he would be able to tell us a lot, uh, but we are already past. So thank you again, everybody. Have a great evening. Uh, students that are on the on the um, call, good luck with your finals. Uh, thank you again for But please, um, please have fun. And any seniors that are online, congratulations. We're super proud of you. And go off and do great things. Take care. Bye.